Hello everybody, good morning. Really nice to see you all. Um, so today, um, yeah, we're gonna work on an exercise. So let's start standing. Please let me just adjust my camera. So standing up. And we'll start with what we did um, on Wednesday, if you were here with me then. So, Feet are hip width apart, shoulders dropping down your back, standing nice and tall in your vertical. And just start by bending your knees forward. It doesn't have to be a big bend, just bend them forward, let them bend and straighten them. And as we're doing this, we can imagine that warmth around our knees within around the skin and outside of our knees. It's almost like you've got two big walls around your knees and you're warming that space. Okay, and then go ahead and stop when you're in that forward bent knee position here and just check your knees. Are they in parallel with your feet and your hips? So are they in their right channel? Are we dipping in a bit with our closed knees or coming out with knees wide apart? We want to be in that channel between our feet and our hips. So we want everything lined up nice. Okay, let's just practice that again and have a sensation of where our knees are traveling. Are they traveling in the right channel? Are they tracking accurately? Just become aware of just the tiny adjustments that the knee has to make in order for us to bend our legs. Okay, and then we'll finish there. We'll come up to the hips again like we did on Wednesday and bringing your weight down to your right foot and your left leg is just hovering slightly. Let's turn out the leg from the femur. So we're turning out the upper thigh and we're moving the ball and socket joint in our hip. So our hips are facing forward and it's just this leg that's turning out and turning back again. And feel that in your muscles. And again, we can think of warming this space around our hips. Imagine this golden light warming the space inside and outside your hips. Good, well done. And then place your left leg down, put the weight down through your left leg, and then let's turn the right leg, outward and inward. And again, please excuse this wire, if you can see it, this is my microphone. Warming that space, feeling that golden light around the ball and socket, within and outside your body. Imagine this space around here is also being warmed. Okay, good, and then place that foot down. And then we'll do the similar thing, but with our foot still on the floor. So the left leg is turning out and in, the femur is turning out and in, but our foot is on the floor. So our foot remains in contact. We might lift up the arches. If we're very inflexible with our feet, the whole of the foot might come off and you might just be having one side of your foot on the floor. We're aiming for flexibility within our feet. That helps us balance. Okay, good. And then let's shift our weight down the left side. And so we'll do the same thing with the right leg. So keeping the right foot on the floor, but rotating the femur in your upper thigh out and in. Good, okay. And then we'll leave that there for a moment. We're gonna come all the way up to our neck and we're going to drop our chin down onto our chest and feel that space down the back of our neck. Lengthening, loosening, shoulders are dropping down your back. Imagine your shoulders are two warm pieces of toast 
and your muscles are like butter. Just allow your shoulders to drop down. And we can just maybe get a bit more length in the back of our neck. Remember that um, giraffe neck exercise that we did. So stroke in the back of the neck to create length. You can imagine that happening as we're doing it. And then bringing our head up nice and slowly to level. And again, remembering an exercise that we've done before in Bokma, this weather vane, and I spoke about this last week, I think. So imagine this weather vane, your head is like a weather vane, you've got something out the back of your head. And imagine this, the wind comes and pushes this to the right. So your head just turns to the left. Your head simply turns, it's not like you have to do anything. And the wind comes from the right to the left, turning that weather vane, something behind your head turns to allow your head to turn to the right. And again, something moves the back of your head from left to right, and your head moves in the opposite direction. And just continue right to left, feeling that space around the back of your neck, space around your head, shoulders are dropping down. Okay, and then let's take this into a rotation. So with your um, head looking over your left shoulder, then drop your head back and look in an arc all the way over your head, all the way looking at the ceiling and coming down to your right shoulder. And then we'll go the other way. As we've got our head up in the air, we want to be careful that we're not reducing the space between the back of the neck. So we want to have our shoulders dropping down our back. We want to great keep that feeling of length in the back of our neck. We don't want to squish up. Keep that length. Keep that feeling of something behind your head moving your head. It's like it's not even you. It's, it's something moving you. Okay, good. And now hopefully, I haven't actually seen where you all are, I hope you're all in a buildings that you can lay down on the floor. So please come to lay on the floor. Okay, lay down on the floor. I hope it's warm for you on your floor. Carpet is very nice at this moment. And become aware of your ribs. Just notice where they are, the front of your ribs. Put your hand on the bony bits at the front of your ribs. Now, most times, if we're a little bit tight somewhere, the front of our ribs, these bits, will stick up in the air. And what we're aiming to do is get our ribs nice and flat. So we're aiming for this space in front of us to come down. And as we do that, it's the back of the ribs that kind of creates space between your ribs and your pelvis. So you want to imagine that rib cage look. And you can almost stroke your ribs down. Have that feeling that your ribs are coming in line with your pelvis. So these ribs don't stick out like a mountain, but they're in line with your pelvis, the bony bits on your pelvis. And we've got that rib cage lift going on behind us. And what we're going to do here is reach um, your fingertips down your legs as if you can reach the walls or wherever you are. And then reaching the fingertips up, reaching, reaching, reaching with your fingertips keeping that, those ribs down, keeping length in the back of the ribs, and going to where you can go without bending your elbows, without moving your ribs out of alignment. Allow your arms to hang down behind you or above your head, really. Rib cage stays down. Back of the rib is lifted, 
So like you've got your rib cage lift. And when I say lifted, I mean not upwards towards the sky, I mean in the direction of your head. So there's space between your ribs and your pelvis at the back, and you're closing the space between the ribs and the pelvis at the front. Okay. So here, having our arms above our head, hopefully we're stretching our shoulders. And then bring your arms down by your side. Okay, we're going to go again, once again, arms over our head. Whichever way you get there is fine. And then link your two thumbs together. So your hands are together. Keep that rib cage lift. Keep the front of the ribs down. And then we're going to go into a crescent moon shape. So walk your hands over to the left and then walk your feet over to the left and keep in your right bottom on the floor. Keep your right hip down. Your legs are over to the left and your arms are over to the left. And when you're here, cross your right leg over your left. So we get this beautiful stretch down the right side of our body. And we're just going to hold it here for a moment. Keep that rib going down. Well, the ribs. The ribs down at the front. Good. And then come back to centre. Uncross your leg, come back to centre. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we're moving our arms over to the right, our legs over to the right. When we can't go further, cross your left ankle over your right ankle. Keep your left hip firmly on the floor. Your left bottom firmly on the floor. Feel that lovely stretch down the left side of your body. Check your shoulders aren't up around your ears. Imagine that rib cage lift going on. Good, and then coming back up to center. Okay, this next part, we're just going to move the top half of our body. So let's go ahead, have our arms down by our side and move our trunk over to the left as much as you can. So you're bending at the waist here. Legs are staying straight down, bending at the waist. So we're bending over to the left. With your palms on the floor, sorry, with your hands on the floor, palms facing up, bring your right arm in a circle all the way over your head and bend at the elbow. And then bring your left arm all the way up to meet your right. Fingertips meet in the middle. And I'm sure you know which exercise we're doing. So we want this circle around our head. We want our arms resting on the floor. We're feeling this nice stretch down the right side of our body if we've got our right bottom on the floor and our right hip, um, right hip on the floor. Feel that rib cage lift at the back of your ribs. Feel your shoulders relaxing down and your head is just turning slightly to the left. Okay, reach your fingers up and bring your hands down by the side. You level off your body so your body is in one line. Then take yourself over to the right. Twist, not twisting. Um, what is this when you move the top half relative to the bottom half? In this plane, bending, sort of bending over to the right. Then with your palms up, back of the hands on the floor, bring your left arm all the way up, fingertip reaching away, all the way over your head, bending at the elbow, bring your right hand up to meet your left hand, fingertips are touching, creating a circle around our head, head is rotated to the right, feeling that nice stretch along the left side of our body, if you don't feel the stretch, then you're probably not bending enough at the waist. Keeping the left buttock completely flat on the floor. 
Breathing here for a moment, enjoying that feeling. Tuning into the angle of your hands. So just relax your hands flat on the floor and notice what position they're in. And then climbing up, as in straightening your body, arms down both sides, and then coming up, as in standing on your feet. Okay, we're going to stand for a few moments and I'm going to take your mind inward. So standing with your feet together, bring your mind into your body. Feel the sensation of your feet connected to the floor. Feel your shoulders dropping down your back. Feel the rib cage lifted at the top. Sorry, the rib cage lifted at the back. Feel the front ribs dropping down. Feel your pelvis level. And then go into your body to feel the sense of life within your body. So what does that feel like? Can you feel a little tingling in your muscles? Can you feel the movement of your breath? Can you feel the beating of your heart? We had this lady come to our school when I was working at Michael Hall, Dr. Karambu from Kenya. And she said to the children, are you living your life the way the life inside you wants to be lived? And from that moment on, I was also fascinated by this idea of feeling the life within. So feel this life within, go in, in, into your body. Feel these forces these life-giving forces streaming within our body. And then take your awareness to the outer edge of your physical body. So feel you as a person standing on the floor. Feel the outline of your body. And then take your thoughts beyond that. So take your thoughts out to your personal space. Feel the personal space around you. Feel that uplift at the front and the gravity pull down the back. Can you feel into your personal space? And then taking your attention even wider, can you feel yourself in your room? Are you connected to the space in the room that you're standing in? And then take your attention even further. Can you connect to the space in your house, your garden? Take it even further. Can you connect to your space in your town or your village or your city? And go out even further. Expand your thinking. Can you connect to the space in your region? Can you expand to connect to the space in your country? Can you connect to the space around the world? Can you connect to the space within our solar system, within our galaxy, within the universe? Okay, and with one hand, I'd like you to reach down with your fingertips to the floor next to your right foot. And then with the other hand, reach down with your fingertips to the floor next to your left foot. And imagine that right hand is reaching down to the microcosm. And your left hand is reaching all the way to the whole of the universe, expanding out into that space. So we're reaching across our chest. The right hand is going down, 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 inward, inward, into the, all the microcosm. 
And the left hand is going up, up, up to the macrocosm. And we bring those two things together. Let's not worry about our feet for the moment. And then on the other side, left hand reaches down. Right hand reaches down. Right hand reaches all the way out to the universe, to the macrocosm. And your left hand reaches all the way to the microcosm. And we bring those two things together. So there's a scientist, Nassim Haramin, who I'm very much a fan of. And he has, um, with his scientific study, detected the smallest thing in the universe and the biggest thing, or the whole entire universe, and he says right bang slap in the middle of the smallest thing and the biggest thing is the human being. So we can connect the smallest thing in the universe and the biggest thing. Now let's go really slowly and do it with our feet involved. So turn your right hand. Right hand goes down. Take a step with our right foot. Left hand gets involved. Reach and reach into the macrocosm with your right hand. And your left hand is reaching down to the microcosm. Just pause here for a moment and feel that expansion across your chest, across the back of your chest, across your ribs, really reaching. You should feel a stretch here. Well, hopefully you feel a stretch. And then let's carry on. So fingertips going up and up and up and up and up. That front hand, that right hand, traveling to meet the left hand. Eyes gaze down at your foot. If you're doing this with your monitor on, have a look at your monitor and check that your head is in the middle of your circle, so you're not skewed one way or the other. Your head is in the middle of the circle. And then bring that circle up and release. Lovely. Let's go slow motion on the other side. So left hand turns, the weather vane turns your head, taking a step, reaching to the macrocosm, reaching to the microcosm with your right hand. Pause here for a moment. Feel yourself right in the middle of the universe and the microcosm. And then keep going and going and going and going and going. Bring your hands together. Check if you can, if your monitor is on, that your head is in the middle. Feel the stretch over the left side of your body. And then bring this up slowly, releasing. And again, right hand. Turn your head, reaching, reaching, reaching. Hands come together. And then let him go, reaching up. So there are many, many um, layers within this exercise. Let's keep going with our left hand. And what I really like is this image of um, hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen kind of falls down low and the hydrogen wants to fly away and with a big ex uh, expenditure of energy you can bring the two things together to make more water but normally they just float around and then come together. But I like this idea of hydrogen and oxygen. Let's go again. Okay, and then one last thing about this exercise, I think we're at time, is um, Steiner's um, ways of thinking, or the theory of thinking, theory of knowledge it is, I think, that we exist as humans 
within our sense perception world and our thinking realm. So we have our senses that take in everything within the earth. So that's the hand that goes down. Oh, sorry, that's the hand that goes down. And then we've got these thoughts that come in, stream in from around us. And to make sense of the world, we bring these two things together. So our sensing and our thinking gives us a combined picture of the world. Let's do two more. Reaching down, you've got your thinking, you've got your sensing, bringing those two things together. Okay. Please excuse me, I think I travelled onto the wrong foot for some of those. Um, I've got quite a confined space to work in. Okay, so um, I've got a few other things just to put into the chat. This is um, a quote from Steiner from the archives. Reality is separated itself for us into two realms, into experience and thinking. And then a little later on, he says, the human being finds himself confronted by two worlds whose connection must be established. So that's the thinking and the experience. And um, it's in the Rudolf Steiner archive. Okay, so we'll leave it there for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to log myself off of this and go onto my monitor over there.